The nominal interest rate is the stated rate, and it does not take into account different compounding periods. The effective rate of interest does take into account different compounding periods. As a basic example, if you invest $100 in an account that pays an interest rate of 8% per year, compounded yearly or annually, then the rate of 8% is the stated or nominal rate. Since it is compounded yearly, at the end of each year, you will receive 8% interest on your investment. To calculate this, we multiply $100 times 0 0.08, the decimal value of 8%, which equals $8. So after one year, you will have $108 in the account, the $100 original investment plus the $8 of interest earnings. Now let's change the example up a little. This time you invest $100 in an account that pays an interest rate of 8% per year compounded quarterly, so four times per year. Again, the stated or nominal rate is 8%, but the effective rate is actually higher than 8%. We're going to go through this in detail. Here is a timeline for one year. At the beginning of the year, you invest $100. The interest for this account is compounded quarterly, four times per year. 12 months divided by four equals three. So every three months, interest will be compounded or added to the account. This will be at the end of month three, month six, month nine, and month 12, which I've marked on the timeline. At the end of month three, March, is the first compound. To calculate this, we don't use 8% because that is a yearly rate, not a quarterly rate. To get the quarterly rate, we divide the yearly rate of 8% by four, which is 2% or 0 0.02. And this is the value that we'll use at the end of each of the four compounding periods to calculate the interest earned. So to calculate the interest earned at the end of the first quarter, we have $100 times 0 0.02, which equals $2. So after the first quarter, the account has the $100 original investment plus the $2 of interest earned, and the total in the account is now $102. Now at the end of the second quarter, after month six, at the end of June, the interest earned will now be the $102 in the account times, again, 2% or 0 0.02, which equals $2.04. So the account now has the $100 original investment plus the $2 of interest earned at the end of the first quarter plus the $2.04 of interest earned at the end of the second quarter. And the total in the account is now $104.04. Now for the end of the third quarter, after month nine, at the end of September. The interest earned will now be the $104.04 in the account, times again, 2% or 0 0.02, which equals 2.0808. I'm not gonna round it off yet. So the account now has the $100 original investment, plus the $2 of interest earned at the end of the first quarter, plus the $2.04 interest earned at the end of the second quarter, plus the 2.0808 interest earned at the end of the third quarter. And the total in the account is now 106.1208. Now for the end of the fourth quarter, after month 12, at the end of December, at the end of the year, the interest earned will now be the 106.1208 in the account times again 2% or 0 0.02, which equals 2.122416. So the account now has the $100 original investment, plus the $2 of interest earned at the end of the first quarter, plus the $2.04 interest earned at the end of the second quarter, plus the 2.0808 interest earned at the end of the third quarter, plus the 2.122416 interest earned at the end of the fourth quarter. And the total in the account is now $108.24 rounded off. So if we compare example one and example two, the account that compounds more has more money in it, meaning the actual rate of interest is larger in example two. In both examples, the stated rate or nominal rate of interest was 8%. To calculate the actual or effective rate of interest, we divide the interest earned by the original investment. For example one, we have $8 divided by $100, which equals 8%. For example two, we have $8.24 divided by $100, which equals 8.24%. And this 8.24% is the effective rate of interest. For example one, since there's only one compounding period per year, the effective rate equals the nominal rate of 8%. So to sum things up, if interest is only compounded once per year, then the nominal rate and effective rate are the same. And if the interest is compounded more than once a year, then the effective rate will be higher than the nominal rate. And here is the formula to calculate the effective rate with all of the variables listed and the calculation using our numbers from example two. All right, my friends, hopefully you got something out of this video. I do have sh sh more videos right there for you. 
Till next time, I am out of here.